Hey everybody, I'm Christopher Green. You're tuning in to AMTV Alternative Media Television. So I just finished watching a roundtable panelist discussion with the founders of Google, the co-founders. Sir J, Sir G, Sir G, however you want to say it, it's kind of like a rap. Uh, and also his co-founder Larry Page discussing the future of Google, the projects that they're working on, Google X. Uh, Larry Page who's being quoted quite widely in CNBC and the Financial Times and in the mainstream media basically saying that he believes Americans and really people all across the world, this is not just American centric, should work four days instead of five and how really we just kind of need to change the way that we look at work in general. And that's something he actually didn't touch on, but I was thinking, you know, we need to change, people need to change their perception of what work means. I mean, I think about what I do, for example, on camera on a day-to-day -day basis, and people told me this was crazy four or five years ago. Uh, what I took as a passion and something that I just like to do is now a full-blown career. And it actually uh, is uh, able uh, and is a viable model for the future. And it's just interesting to see what Google's doing uh, in the investments that they're making. Of course, whether or not you like or hate Google, they are probably the most powerful company, I would argue, entity on the planet with their investments outside of search now, diversifying, really almost becoming a technological conglomerate of sorts, where they're investing in things like Boston Dynamics, robotics, artificial intelligence, machine intelligence, self-driving cars, etc. And it's changing the ball game in the landscape of really our entire civilization. One of the interesting points that Larry Page pointed out, and uh, Sergi was joking uh, that he was a robot, that Larry uh, himself, the co-founder, uh, was, <laughs> was almost like a machine himself. He was talking about the idea of government and how he was very pessimistic that long-term governments could survive and that the government here in the United States could survive. And what he argued is the fundamental problem is the increase of complexity that occurs with any government system. And that complexity eventually caves in on itself. And I thought it was a very interesting analysis of the structure of government itself. And people were asking what they thought government 2.0 would look like. And he said, you know, we need to change laws, et cetera. We need to look at a different way of doing things. We need to get things that uh, don't seem uh, meaningful or are, are not logistically prudent anymore off the books. And we need to just kind of change our thought process and the existing paradigm. Uh, I, I too believe that all of this is changing is a fundamental result of technology itself. Again, it, with the advent of the internet, uh, social media, uh, big technology, artificial intelligence, and AI, et cetera, whether or not you think it's for better or worse, it's fundamentally changing the paradigm across all industries. Whether or not this is our financial markets that largely trade via an algorithm today, and is a Ponzi scheme propelled by the Federal Reserve and propagandized to us people like Janet Yellen, or this is healthcare and the future of health with nanobots potentially entering our bodies and regulating our bloodstreams, or the patents that Google has patented, things like contact lenses that measure your glucose levels and will tell you uh, when you need a take a prescription, uh, monitor bad and healthy cells internally in your body, uh, uh, whether or not it's the Ray Kurzweil's of the world preaching uh, the singularity, the merger of man with machine uh, at the point where man will reach a point where we'll, we're inferior to the collective artificial intelligence of machines, whether or not it's Tyra Banks, who actually penned a very interesting blog that I, I read today, talking about beauty and how beauty is gonna change and how now that we're able to select, and in the near term, it'll almost be like driving through a drive through window, uh, choosing your son or daughter's eye color or their sex for that matter, their hair color, their skin color, et cetera, and how the perception of beauty is changing itself. And, and she went and even took it a step further. And I was actually very impressed with the analysis. She said, in the future, we're all gonna have robots working for us that we're not even gonna have to pay for. In fact, the advertisers and the sponsors that promote products and services from these companies are gonna pay you to have the assistant. And this robot technology, this machine intelligence, what used to be called the AI, I like how they're changing the verbiage, calling it machine intelligence now because AI has a negative connotation to it, the machines are gonna take over. They're gonna create efficiencies where maybe we only have to work 
two days a week, three days a week, that the machines are doing everything else. And it's interesting to see the perspectives, and of course we can also see the holes in this analysis, but the perspectives of these billionaires that dominate the world today. Uh, Larry Page saying that, you know, in order for humans to be happy, people don't like to be idle, they like to be doing things. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're more productive. In fact, uh, working endless hours, tireless hours, to consume things we don't need, isn't productive, and then creating carbon emissions and destroying the planet, et cetera, putting chemicals into our atmosphere isn't necessarily more productive, efficient, or profitable from a business perspective or uh, from the perspective of the planet and the health of our people, civilization, and humanity. And they also talked about businesses on Wall Street today having a very narrow vision of what they see going forward. And management, the pressure of CEOs, which have an average lifespan of four years or so, are pressured to achieve quarterly results instead of having a long-term vision of the company. And I think it's really interesting, and I think whether or not you disagree or or agree with what the co-founders of Google have to say, and there's many issues that I fundamentally disagree with the founders. There's others that I find, other ideas I find extremely enlightening. You have to respect the technology and the companies that are actively transforming our society the way it is today, transforming the paradigm of government, what will make up government 2.0, what makes up new technology in fields like transportation and Google self-driving cars, uh, and the automation of systems and robotic technology that will do more uh, tasks, uh, more of the meaningless tasks that we've been doing that are taking up our time, freeing us to focus on more creative projects. I would argue maybe even more lucrative, profitable, uh, enjoyable projects in the future. All of this being changed by the tech giants that dominate the world today. And of course, all this integrated together. And what's amazing, with all these divergent investments, whether it's Boston Dynamics or self-driving cars or AI or Google X or balloon satellites uh, with the intention of uh, giving internet out uh, to the planet in different ways, uh, clean energy, all of this integrates back into the Borg. All of this integrates back to technology. And, and although it looks like Google's diversifying in all these strange feel, fields like national defense, it's really all integrated into the same paradigm. And you know, companies like Google, we question this all the time, question whether or not they have too much power. If they've concentrated too much ownership of our society and the direction that it's headed. Uh, of course, with the advent of AI and the uh, predictable singularity that the most brilliant minds and scientists are talking about today, whether or not it's entrepreneurs like Elon Musk, uh, founder of Tesla and SpaceX, or it's Stephen Hawking uh, with his theories, or it's uh, Google executives like Ray Kurzweil, they're all talking about the singularity, the fundamental shift of biological humanity with that of machine, and machines taking over in a parabolic move that goes just straight up around roughly the years 2025 and 2030, changing everything in the not too distant future. Again, past performance doesn't predict future returns, folks. And just because we didn't experience something over the last 10 or 20 years doesn't mean that things can't fundamentally transition into a completely different reality in the future. One of the uh, arguments that Ray Kurzweil argues in his book, The Singularity is Near, he says that in the last 20 years, we've had about a century worth of advancements in technology. But in the next 20 years, we're gonna have 20,000 years worth of advancement. See how almost difficult to comprehend that is, a parabolic movement to the singularity uh, and that shift in humanity and what it means to be human, what it means to be a man, what it means to be a woman, what it means to have a government, what, what it means to have health care, health and, and a uh, integrated society as it is today, what, what it means to even have uh, barriers to entry, whether or not this is business, economic, philosophical, religious, anything, all of this changes the game. And it's absolutely fascinating. I encourage you to watch the clip. Love to hear your thoughts. Put your comment, question, suggestion in the box below. I'm Christopher Green, hard hitting it in your face as usual. And click the link below to support our sponsor.